Paige has a special guest for you. Forgoing a modeling career that was successful with banana boat suntan lotion, then deciding he no longer wanted to be a famous movie star, he is a motorcycle madman, the one, the only, Brian Clark! That, 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 that is an entry. No Here stuff. we go, man. Here we You're go. You're the man. All right. Well, Brian, uh, South Dakota this time of year. It's beautiful riding weather. Beautiful riding weather. We've got a couple here that, uh, that I met, uh, got an interview up on, uh, on the, the face uh, book with them. Uh, I don't know if you know them, the Wash Knox. Oh, yeah. From Aberdeen. Yeah, absolutely. Katie. They're here. Kate, Katie and James are here. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so you'll have to. South yeah. Dakota's in the house. Whoop, whoop. Representing That's up right. in here, up in here. So, yeah, but I figured you'd know the Wash Knox. They've got their uh, his and hers bikes here. They built identical knuckleheads. Nice. One's black, one's white. They built them for their wedding. Isn't that sweet? That is good. That is good stuff. How do you so, go wrong with that? I uh, interviewed. couple that rides together S stays just good. dang lucky. Exactly, exactly. So, listen, but we're enough about them. They had their time in the, in the limelight. <laughs> I, I already made sorry, them I famous. It. So, let's let you make me famous for a minute and answer some <laughs> questions. Now, Brian, everybody knows, you know, that you are, uh, you've got a great business, Clockworks, the flare windshield, all these bagger, all this stuff, and we're going to get to all that. But I always start with guys, I want to know, when did you fall in love with motorcycles? My dad always had bikes, always, right? So the coolest thing was to get on the back of dad's bike and go to the ice cream store or whatever, right? 10 miles away, there's a little Dairy Queen or something on the corner. And, and it was one of those deals where then I suddenly had brothers, right? I didn't really want to share my time on the motorcycle with them, but dad would take us both, right? Oh, so wow. I'd be on the back, my brother would be on the front, and, you know, we're from a small town, it's like two, 350 people, you know? So <laughs> the rules aren't really rules. And so <laughs> dad puts the kid on the front, helmet on, and he would tape a towel to the tank because you could always make it to the ice cream store, but you just couldn't quite make it back home. <laughs> and so my brother would fall asleep, he'd be like, kunk, kunk, kunk. And my dad's like, you're not chipping my paint. You know? <laughs> That's awesome. So and you then, grew up riding. Right, and then I, I think I was a serial entrepreneur. I got a little QA50, I had the green one, I'm looking for the green one. Um, <laughs> and uh, that was my mini bike, and there was a vacant lot right next to our house between us and the neighbors. And I would ride that thing around in circles, right? And so I wore a track in there, and then the neighbor kids would come over, right? Well, tell you how old I am, like a comic book was maybe a quarter, right? So I would charge these kids a nickel. <laughs> and they got five laps or All right. ten laps or whatever. But then I got to run down to the candy store four or five blocks downtown on my pedal bike and get some bubble gum and a comic book and Look at you. You've, feed my sweet you've tooth. You've always been in the motorcycle business. I, yeah, <laughs> it was, my dad just laughs. He's like, you've always had a problem, you know? <laughs> now, all right, so you're on this little QA50, green one, which he's looking for. Yeah. And uh, what was the first street bike you remember having? Uh, my first street bike, honestly, was a, a 1981 Honda CM400T, brand spanking new. Oh, the rich kid in town. Look yeah, at my you, man. No, my dad was always into motorcycles, right? So he's just like, we're going to get you a new bike. And I'm like, really? Like wow. a brand new bike? I mean, like off the showroom, brand new bike. That's I was like, cool. Oh, I was so geeked out. Yeah, man. That's... So I, I have one of those. I bought it back. Wow, oh man. <laughs> you know, to this day, I've never had a brand new motorcycle. No, yeah, and ever, I've never no, taken one well, off the I think, I, I, think I hit that peak, and then ever since then, it's kind of going been down. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Wow, man, I yeah, tell you, that's amazing. Well, I, I think I'd have had a heart attack. It oh, was man, crazy. That sounds yeah. crazy. So now, what was the first bike you remember customizing that you, when, would, when did you start feeling the need to kind of get in, that, get that itch scratched? It was, uh, I had a 1986 FXR, okay. Um, Very popular now, those really have come back. Yeah, that was my first ever Harley, wow. right? And so, bought one of those and this guy had just jacked it up, right? He had gone to jail, the license plate was on upside down. I mean, he seriously had a few problems, right? I buy the bike, go home, 
take it all apart, paint it, put it back together, and all my dad's friends are like, oh my God, you're a stupid kid. You know, <laughs> he just wrecked that bike, you know? And my dad's like, it's kind of his, he can do what he wants, right? Let him just, let him do whatever he wants, right? Yeah. And I sold the bike, and I made like 500 bucks. So I thought I was like, you know, oh, raising yeah. the roof. That's 500 mini, oh, that's more than that. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lot like, of laps. Oh, that's a lot of laps on a mini bike, right? So I was there. super excited, right? So I bought another FXR. That one I rode from Mitchell, South Dakota in March to Daytona. It's 20 degrees when I left. Yeah. So you can imagine what the wind chill is, right? You got your ski mask on and all this stuff and ride to Daytona. The cold front follows me all the way. Of course. Finally get to Atlanta and I can finally shed some clothes and roll on into Daytona. Shedding clothes is popular in Atlanta. I've heard. Have a lot I've of heard. those places. Well, I figured you'd move late. <laughs> I get there and I'm talking to Arlen Nesney of that Ferrari bike, right? And oh, I went yeah. up there, I go, oh, man, I'm such a huge fan. And he goes, where are you from? I go, South Dakota. He goes, yeah, it's a long ride from there. I go, you're telling me. He goes, what? <laughs> he goes, it's got to be cold there. You seriously rode your bike out here? I go, yeah, absolutely. You know? Uh -huh. Well, then when we rode home, the last day we got caught in a snowstorm, but we finished it, it finished was all good. Home. And then from there it went crazy. I bought an FXR police bike and that was the first one I fully customized. I went to Kansas City uh, to the regional hog show. First ever show, drive all night, you know, get there, just slamming to try to get this bike done. It's pouring rain when we get there. Show's called off. I was so frustrated, I fell asleep in the truck didn't even go into the hotel. My buddies went in there, and all of a sudden, some guy's rapping on my window. He goes, hey, hey, kid, hey, kid, it's cleared up. Show's back on, you better get your bike out. I'm like, no way, right? <laughs> I gave my bike over there, and I'm, I've been up for four days working on this thing. I went over to the hotel to take a shower, and I literally passed out. Oh, no, so you missed your first show. No, and the bike was, the bike was <laughs> the in bike the show. Was there. I come back and they're like, hey, you just missed it. I go, what do you mean? They go, Willie G. Davison was just checking out your ride for like 25 oh, minutes. Man. I go, are you serious? They're like, yeah, he loves that bike. Here's how my life goes, right? The next <laughs> day, they do the awards thing and the uh, bike's still out there. And I go up there and like no honorable mention, not like last place, just anything. Just give me a, <laughs> just give me a shout out, right? It's my first ever custom bike. I'm so bummed out. I know I'm gonna see these guys one month coming in Sturgis, right? So I go up to the stage, I said, hey, can you tell me what happened with my FXRP, my police bike? I like didn't get anything, like not, can you tell me what's wrong with it? Cause I'm going to Sturgis and I really wanna, I really wanna make this the best bike ever, right? The guy goes, well, you know, you really didn't do anything. It's kind of stock. And I'm like, kind of stock? From axle to axle, I changed everything on that motorcycle. The frame's molded, it's raked, it's badass. You can't say that, you know? And he goes, well, I'll be happy to look at it for you, kid, bring it up. So I go out there and the crowd's dispersed, everybody's left, Th things are kind of opening up and people all over the place and I'm really mad now. So I just start this thing up and it sounds like a top feeler, it's ridiculously loud, <laughs> so stupid, and I drive right through the crowd. Creates just this huge stir, right? Here comes Willie, he's headed for the stage. He goes, what's going on here? The guy's jaw just drops. He goes, I'm sorry. You won best of show. Oh my God. I, you won the Radical Custom class and your bike is the best. And I forgot to announce it. Oh my God. Willie, That's a Jeff Nager move right there, no, folks. Willie felt so bad. He's like, come here once. We went over there and took a bunch of pictures. He signed a bunch of junk for my buddies. And, oh man. You know, but, That's a great story. Yeah, my, that, that has been my life in motorcycling. I, I never fail to just fall standing up. I feel so blessed. That's I get to great. meet cool kids like you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I got to be in Why We Ride. Oh, we, yeah. My family was the first interview for that movie. That's a great movie. Brian too. Carroll is now one of my great friends. He came up to me afterwards, goes, your family embodies what we love about motorcycling. You're just passionate, like you well, love you this are, stuff. You are, you guys are, man, you got it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, you're my first interview ever. I said, what? He goes, yeah, I mean, wait till you see the movie. It's gonna be just kind of like what you explained. Oh man, that's cool. I thought nothing of it. I would've it. thought Brian would, yeah. You have no idea how instrumental the IMS show is to why we ride. My wife said, hey, they sent a trailer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it thinking these are just another TV show, just another movie guy, right? I was rude. 
I should have looked at it right away. All of a sudden, she gets me in the office and she goes, stop, now stop right here, you're gonna watch this, it's two minutes. Hit the button, it's my voice. I couldn't have been more embarrassed and felt more like a jerk, yeah. right? I'm like, oh man, she goes, what are you gonna do? I go, I gotta help these guys. Uh, this is really about motorcycling. It's about all of us. And it doesn't matter what brand you're on, what you're doing, right? Super exciting. I called them up. I said, hey, I've been praying about this. I think I got it. They go, what do you mean? I said, I need you to bring your laptop and your headphones. I need you to come to the IMS show in Long Beach. I just happen to be in town for a meeting in LA and I need five hours of your time. Like, okay, we'll meet you there at noon. So they come at noon. And I literally went over to Indian, I went to Harley, I went to Progressive, I went to everybody, even if I didn't know them, and I thought they were important in the play. I said, you gotta meet these guys, you gotta watch this trailer. Yep. And so to this day, Brian Carroll's like, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have jumped all those hurdles, we wouldn't have got oh, here. Well, that's awesome. Well, that's, but and they're in good this guys. business, that's huge. They're, they're good, good guys. guys. But in this industry, in this community, it takes an introduction like that from somebody that other people trust, so. Well, man, that's great. Well, you uh, now you are doing a bunch of stuff. You you know you started off with that Harley stuff. Right. Still doing a lot of parts for Harley. Oh, yeah, and oh, that. Yeah. You do a lot of bagger parts. You're working a lot with Victory. Um, what are you doing with Victory? What's your next big project with them? What's going on? My wife started a charity called Helping with Horsepower. Uh, we it's we have a bike rebuild program. We take a wrecked bike into a troubled teen center, generally speaking, and. With the tools that have been donated, these kids will rebuild this bike. Just like with the tools at the school, they can fix their life. They both come in a little messed up. We have to analyze them, right? But you're not gonna do it by yourself. You do it by a team, you do this. So it's a motorcycle message, motorcycle message. Yeah. We raffle the bike off every year for the last three years. We've raised $80,000 every year. And that's just in Mitchell, right? Yeah. So now it's caught on. She's got them going on in Alabama, all over the country. They're doing them in Missouri. There's one in Denver. And the one in Pine Bush, New York, actually we got called by the school. And Lloyd from Lloyd's Motor Works is on the school board. He convinced them to call Laura. We fly out there. The principal goes, hey, I'll tell you what, you can do a burnout on the gym floor. I go, are you kidding me? Like, who would want to do that? Like, I still yeah. want to do that. I, I, I want to right? do it now. I didn't yeah, even I thought know, about it. Now I want to go do it. And he goes, no, seriously. So I do a burnout on one of Lloyd's bikes. These kids are freaked out that I'm smoking a tire on the floor at the basketball court, right? And the principal goes, the game's about to change. I want you to listen to Mr. Clark. And I told these kids, you gotta come to school. You just gotta show up. We're gonna give you a wrecked bike and we're gonna bring you to Bonneville. They're like, I can't do that, you know? I don't have any money, I've never been out of town. Mr. Clark, I'm 16, I have two kids. I said, well, we're gonna have to find a babysitter then because you're coming with me. 30 kids, 21 of them finished. The US Army got behind us. We flew the kids to Yellowstone, got them to go through the park. Then they came to Bonneville. First year out, we set a land speed record. How about that? That bike is in the victory booth. The next year, a bunch of new kids. We took the fairing off, set a naked class record on that bike. And this year, victory has said, you know what? This is a fantastic program, hands-on learning for these kids. We got you. We got a brand new 2015 cross country. We took the, there's programs for engineering, for math, for singing, for band, you know, all this great stuff, right? But nothing for the kids that were about to drop out. You know, the yeah. losers like me who just couldn't get yeah. it, right? And so all of a sudden now we're taking the engineering kids and the math kids and we're hooking them up with the Helping With Horsepower kids. And these kids are gelling. We had a junior in high school, had no credits. Couldn't even finish class, right? He saw that CAD program and he went up to the professor and he says, any chance I can come in after school and work on this? Kid's connected now. He's doing his math because he knows he can use the CAD program. And then- All makes sense right. to him because he can apply it. Right. Yeah, man, that's great. Our goal is to be the first victory over 200. Man, that's great. We're using SolidWorks, we're using Flow Dynamics, we've got Stratasys Rapid Prototyping Machines on board, Ferro Arms. These huge companies are like, right on, give these kids the tools. Man, that's like, great. It's awesome. Well, I mean, you know, Brian, you are, your family, Laura, Carly, you, um, and now I'm dropping the uh, Carly sister's name. 
Erica. Erica. <laughs> I don't know Erica though. Yeah. Because she doesn't really dig the she, whole yes, motorcycle. Yeah, she kind of hide, hides like out. She flies she in. Out. She goes fast and she goes home. I do know that she is. Uh, she has her own business though. There. She in, does. In We're Mitchell. super she, proud of her. She's a massage therapist yeah. there. Has her own spa there. So you got to check that out. Now, uh, but you guys just represent motorcycling so well. Uh, you're all over the place. I don't think you guys ever sleep. Yeah, Carly's little scout. That's like a proud papa moment. Just to walk in here today and see my daughter Scout in the Indian booth. She's 21 years old. She was the first person to customize an Indian, yeah, yeah. Uh, an Indian great. Scout. Well, and uh, you guys are just all over the place. Just you're, a cool you're just, kid. you're just so wonderful. And she's a Pat fan. Oh, of course she's a Pat fan. Well, she's got a Pat Bear. So. That's right. You got to have. You it. know you made it when you get a Pat Bear. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but uh, well, Brian, I appreciate the fact that you were here Friday. And then you had to go to the V Twin Expo in Cincinnati right. yesterday. You flew back in today so that you could you could do some more stuff here, so that you could be on stage with me. Yeah, I had no hearing, idea. What hearing, an honor. Hearing, what an honor. I'm hearing. serious. And so, uh, but uh, thanks for coming to the Progressive International Motorcycle Show. And uh, as always, friend, it is good to see you. Thanks so much. Big hand, Brian Clock, Clockworks Motorcycles. Thanks for being here, friend. Hey, it's no good problem. To see you. All it's right, man. Progressive. This is a great show. Great surprise. Hey, the Progressive School.